Hey guys, J.A. Curtis here, and today I wanted to do a quick Laravel quick tip for you. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. By, by its very nature, a Laravel quick tip should be quick, so I shouldn't say it's a quick Laravel quick tip, but I think it is pretty quick. All of that aside, I wanted to bring you guys a Laravel quick tip today, and this quick tip is kind of related to validation, and it's a common, this is a very common use case that I just wanted to make sure everyone knew about this kind of feature inside of Laravel, because it can make your job a lot easier if you know that it exists, and if you don't, then it could be, it obviously makes the job a lot harder, and so I just wanted to bring it to you. It's going to be pretty easy to go over, so let me just show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm inside of a project here. I'm working on a user controller, so this is a user controller. It's got all your normal um, CRUD functions here that you would expect, and um, this is when we're creating and editing users. So you can see here on the store function when we're storing a new user, um, we we're trying to we validate the request, and when we get to the email, we want to obviously validate that it's unique. So I just want to make sure you guys first of all knew this. This is kind of part one of the two part or three part uh, quick tip. Um, first of all, I want to make sure you're aware of this unique functionality. So when you're validating against something like an email, you don't want more than one of the same email usually in a user's um, table, it, or at least for me, I'm using uh, the user's um, email address as their username. So that's their unique value that I, they need to be unique because I can't ha I can't have multiple the same email address because then I don't know what to compare you know a password to or something like that. So I want all my emails to be unique in the database. All right, and so the way I can do that here is and the cool Laravel ways when I'm validating my email address, I can obviously just add unique. Okay. And when we add this unique, we have a couple of parameters we can add. We add the table that we want to search in, and then the column that we want to we want to look in to make sure it's unique. So in this case, we want to make sure that the email that they submitted um, is unique to the email column in the users table, and that's what you see going on here. Okay, so this is the syntax for it. It's unique colon the name of the table that we search. In this case, the users table. We want to look in the email column and then make sure there's it's there's none no other of the same email in the email column, okay? And then this will come back if it's unique, and if it's not, it'll break the validation and reset it, okay? So this is really cool, just so you guys wanna know that this exists, okay? Now, the question often comes when you get down to update, okay? And this is kind of, I started working on this update function and decided to make a video here. So when you're updating your user's information here, we're getting to the email, we kinda can run into a problem. If I run unique, let me just show you here. We run unique users and email, and we save that. All right, now let's come over here and just see what happens. I'm gonna go over to my project. I've got in here a project that's, or a, a user pulled up on the edit function. Okay, so we're editing we're editing it. If we click save user changes, it'll submit to the update function. And um, okay, let's just say here that I wanna change um, his name from Sam John to Sam Johnson. And in this case, we're gonna keep his email address the exact same, he's just changing his name. Very common use case. Again, I click save user changes. And I haven't set up, um, I actually haven't set up like uh, my error messages, uh, my banners and stuff to kind of show the errors. However, um, you can see that it kind of reverted back. And what, because what happened here is it went to save it, the validation failed, and so now it pushed it back with my old data back into my form, okay? So basically the validation failed. That's what you saw here. You didn't get any of the error messages because I'm early on in my project and I haven't set it up yet, okay? But basically the validation failed. So. The reason the validation failed was because I didn't change that email address, right? It's the same email address it had before. Well, when it got all the data, it grabbed the email address, it looked to see if it was unique. It it was no longer unique because when it looked in this email column, it found that this email right here already existed. Now, it obviously already existed in this user, but it already existed, and so it came back and it failed, all right? And so if you didn't know about this little tip I'm about to show you, this can be a pain in the butt. You start having to do conditionals on your validations and stuff and it gets annoying. Well, one thing that you can actually do now is you can actually extend this unique function even further. We can actually tell it now if we pass in a third parameter and we pass in now the um, an ID number to ignore, okay? So by default, it looks for the uh, user ID or an, you know, an ID for this in this table. And then um, it will it can ignore a certain value. So if I I already have the ID coming in from the um, from the request here, it gets passed in um, as part of the URL. So if I actually pass in the ID as a second parameter, and of course in order to do this, I've got to use double quotation marks to interpolate. Okay, so um, double quotation marks. But for those of you that don't know, allow you to actually embed URLs directly. If you do the single quotes, it just um, 
Um, it would actually render this like dollar sign ID. It doesn't actually see it as a variable. Okay, so by using double quotes, now I can use a variable in here. So I'm gonna pass in the ID number. And now that what this is gonna say is this is gonna say, okay, look in the users table, look down the column and find, make sure it's, it's unique in this column, but skip over this ID number, this, this row that you get to. And don't worry about you know send you know validating it against that ID number. And so this is really nice because now it won't trigger it because it won't trigger itself when it tries to validate. So it's no longer going to think that it's not unique. It's not going to see the its own email address as a problem. Okay. So this is what's really cool about this. So now if I click and I uh, save this here and we come over here and we save now. I'm not gonna change anything. We're gonna change his name again back to Sam Johnson. We're gonna leave his email address the same and click save changes. And um, now it comes back over here. This is basically the start of a user page. So it now successfully saved. You can see now his name is Sam Johnson, but his email address is the same, okay? So it was successful in what it did. So I just wanted to show this to you guys so you knew that you can take this unique value. You can not only make sure it's unique like this, but when you go to update, this is the part that I didn't know, if you pass in an ID as the third parameter, you can actually make sure that it's, um, you can kind of skip over the current number so it doesn't trigger itself. It's a really, really handy tool. This is your Laravel quick tip for today. Okay, thanks um, thanks for tuning in everybody. Um, it was a quick video. I'm super busy right now working on this project ironically, so I'm trying to get videos up. I've got a couple that I just need to upload that I'll probably get to tonight or something. And then I've wanted to, I'll probably make a few quick tips while I'm working on this because I'm running into lots of ideas for quick tips while I work on this. So um, anyway, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Obviously the likes and the comments help you know get this out to the world a little bit more and you can always follow me on um, Twitter and also I've got the site up now for devmarketer.io if you want to go check that out it's uh, kind of a work in progress it's not complete quite yet we're still working on it and um, but I just have that up and I'm gonna start adding articles kind of as um, I find some time so anyway thanks so much for everything guys I will see you in the next video